What is up, everybody? How is everyone doing out there today? Welcome back to Wildcat MTG. And uh, today, I get to crack open a Ravnica Remastered Collector Box. Uh, we are going Shockland hunting. That's officially what this is. I mean, this is basically like one of the, the two or three best reasons to open this product. The other ones are if you want to hunt a serial numbered cards or serial numbered cards in general. Uh, and then uh, cool anime foils. That's kind of where it's at with this product. Uh, that's basically what we're looking for. We'll talk a little bit about it. But um, that being said, I'm just going to dive on in and let's crack some packs. So as of the filming of this video, wrapping the remaster backs of boxes have been incredibly stable. Um, I think they really only got as low as like maybe 240 About 270 right now, which is not obviously inexpensive, right? On average, you should be getting about seven shock lands per box, and even just the regular foil or the regular shocks or the regular foil shocks are like ten to twenty dollars. Uh, the borderless and the uh, are these pull tip? They are okay, cool. Uh, the borderless and the uh, retro frames are kind of where it's at as well. Those are ranging from also from like ten to twenty ish, roughly. So uh, your baseline for your your boxes offers a really good floor on these. Just because, you know, I'm kind of at minimum. I, I, you know, you're pulling five shocks and at maximum I've heard as many as 10. I've done as many as nine. So let's hope for all of that good stuff today. Start off with a retro frame uh, death rate shaman. Ref retro frame foil death rate shaman. It, it's going to be a, a hit. Like it's going to be a few bucks. But the reality is, is like aside from the shock lands, the retro frame stuff is kind of meh in this product. As far as value is concerned, it really is about can you pull a good anime foil or two, uh, and how many shocks can you pull? So yeah, it's a hit, but we really want to see shock lands and uh, anime stuff because that's, let's, let's call it what it is. That's where the value is in this product. But nevertheless, a retro frame foil death threat shaman is pretty cool. Fibblefip is our first regular anime. Not, not like a ton of value there, but it's a cool looking card. Then we have a Thespian stage, which I believe is a collector box exclusive. Not, not like a big value target, but it is neat that they included it. All right, we've got ourselves a pack foil, find and finality. Experiment one, perilous forays, shambling shell, and nothing in the mana fixing spot, which is, it's fine. Um, you're usually about good for about one shock land per box, sometimes two in that Mana fixing spot. Uh, aside from Shocklands, which I've mentioned a few times now, uh, I did mention other animes, but like mythic wise, Psychrift Cy is in the set and that's a hit regardless of what treatment you get in. <laughs> Court of Calling in the Retro Frame. Sure, Retro Frame Foil Court of Calling, I'm going to guess is in like the five to six dollar range. Uh, it's not nothing, but it, again, you know, kind of said where, where it's at at this point. Hey! Another anime. It is a Chromatic Lantern, non-foil, probably a few bucks there. Not bad. And I really do like the anime arts. They do look good. Hence, I think, I think you know, we can say art is subjective, but clearly people enjoy it. Toll Smear as a retro frame. And then Cinder Vines as a pack foil rare. And still nothing. And nothing in the mana fixing. So we're two packs in and... No shock lands, but a lot of ball game left. You know, I will say that I'm pleasantly surprised by how well these have held up. But again, I think if you're looking at, you know, on average seven shocks per box and you're talking about 15 to 20 a piece, that does give you a pretty good floor. There we go. Borderless foil, temple gardens. Very, very nice. The retro frames are the ones that carry the big premium on the foils, but the borderless are no slouch. They're all going to be like roughly in that $20 range. So you really can't go wrong. I think uh, Temple Gardens is probably right around 21, 22 bucks, something like that. So uh, that is a, a strong start for us. Followed by a Tesa. Anime Tesa. Uh, this is, even though it's, I'm going to say only rare, I think the rare version is about three, but like the multiplier on the, on the foil anime is pretty huge. And I'm going to guess that's because she's a popular commander as well. So yeah, maybe three bucks for the non-foil anime tesa hey retro frame birds let's go birds is always good for five or six bucks the anime version is one that i really really like and it's beautiful and actually does have some good value as well but uh we don't get sad about birds of paradise around here phyto hydra creeping chill as a nice little retro frame foil lightning helix retro nice Recto skilled boro skilled and that will do it so we're three packs in we're finally on the board with our first of our shock lands. 
<laughs> Actually, no Mythics yet. Um, I've cracked maybe one Psych Rift. I don't think I've cracked more than one, so mm, kind of holding out hope that we're due for one today. Supreme Verdict as a Retro Frame Foil. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a big value target, but obviously a, a good card in its own right. But there we go. Breeding Pool. Nice. Borderloose Breeding Pool. Again, that's probably going to be in that $20 range or so. So uh, not going to be uh, pretend to be upset about that. We will take all the Shocklands we can get our hands on. Protean Hulk. Hulk. <laughs> our first Mythic is Protean Hulk. Um, retro Frame, probably uh, 4 to 5 bucks. My guess, uh, but obviously a good combo piece. Solid pull. Fibble Fip in the pack foil version. Totally lost. Condemn. Coiling Oracle. And Rakdo Signet. Cool. All right, well, we go to pack number five. We now have one Mythic down. Actually, what's funny is I rarely track the Mythic counts in this box because I really don't think, other than like Cyclonic Rift and like maybe Bruvac to a lesser extent, like most of the other Mythics are kind of like, eh, they're, they're fine. Not great, but they're fine. Savara, Queen of Golgari in the Retro Frame Foil. The anime uh, anime foil version of her has the nice little premium on it, but not, not going to be on the Retro Frame. What our third borderless shock of the box. So we have two borderless uh, non-foil and one foil. And that is not a terrible place to be at all. So uh, Sacred Foundy, you know, again, all of the borderless are going to be in that like $12 to $20 range for the non-foils. You get add a few bucks for the foil versions. So a solid hit, uh, definitely. Followed by a Karns Bastion. Neat. I think this, I don't think this is in the regular set. I can't remember. I don't think so. I think it's another collector box. Karns Bastion in the uh, retro frame, no less. Pretty cool pull. I'm down with that. Uh, Yeva, Nature's Herald in the pack foil. Is it Gilead? Cool. Raptor, sure. Ledge Walker. And Demir Guildgate. A Demon Fire, still an uncommon. I remember when that card was like bonkers. <laughs> Okay, last pack of the first half of the box, and uh, we are up to three Shocklands. Let's see if we can keep that train going. Okay. Oh, man, so many of the Retro Frame Foils. Ah, Sphinx's Revelation, sure. Not going to be a hit. Followed by a Pack Rat. I love good old Pack Rat. Love the anime version of it, but also, uh, unfortunately, not a hit. But uh, that definitely... <laughs> I love the art on it. Blind Obedience in the retro frame. Cool. And a Mythic. It is Gideon. Uh, Gideon, sure. Mythic. Uh, people have commented because there's Gideon, Teferi, and Liliana the Dreadhorde, and they don't have anime versions on it. I suspect that's because Japanese War of the Spark had really sweet anime versions, and they just didn't want to... Um, undercut or or even compete with those um, especially I mean a mono Liliana is is a pole of poles right all right vindictive vampire far seek guild gate and another signet although I'm not like upset about signets by the way I actually needed a bunch of those for whatever it's worth in terms of playables Ravnica remastered you know while the value might basically be restricted to either cyclonic rift or anime foils or shock lands there are lots of playables right whether it's the guild gates whether it's signets a um, lot of really cool uncommons in here as well so plenty of reason to like the product outside of just those things rakdos lord of riots uh yeah another of the retro frame that is definitely not what we're chasing we want to see anime borderless foils tomic as an anime card because why not uh, all right Bottled Cloister as a retro frame, sure. And Lazab, the multifarious, down grift, uh, down, uh, down, I was going to say downsized, down shifted. There we go, in rarity, because that was originally, I believe, a, a mythic. Demir Guildgate, and here we go. Nice, Overgrown Tomb. So we did get uh, one in that mana fixing slot, Overgrown Tomb. And again, I think even on the low end, just for the regular, like non retro frame or non borderless, you're still talking about a range of. Uh, Ten to twenty dollars for the uh, for the foils. Uh, Overgrown tomb is probably going to be in the twelve thirteen dollar range somewhere around there. So that is a solid hit for us still. We are fine with that. Okay, that concludes. Well, that was the first pack of the second half of the box. Let's say concludes the first half. Nope, already there. 
Only two mythics? I'm hopeful. And we haven't hit a, an anime foil yet. And usually there's about one... I say usually. It doesn't happen all the time. But one uh, retro frame foil shock per box. And that is where uh, a lot of value lies. Because I think at minimum they're like 30. Sword of the Perun. So another retro frame foil. Kind of unfortunately. Godless Shrine. But we were cleaning up on the Borderless Shocks. Uh, and that's not the worst place to be either. So that's pretty good. Uh, I think, uh, you know, again... I'll take all the borderless, all the shock lands you want to give me. That does put us up to five, which it feels good um, at this stage with a few packs left. All right, Niv, Mizzet Reborn. I think that's technically a mythic, so we'll put that up top. Quasi Duplicate. I kind of like that card. It's not valuable, but I still kind of like the card. Narcomoeba. Retro Frame Foil Narcomoeba. Boulder Vine Cloak. Faith's Fetters. And Simic Guildgate to go with. Okay, all right. So as I mentioned, <laughs> cleaning up on the borderless. We actually have four borderless shocklands, of which one of them is foil. So doing fairly well in that category. Oh, brutal. That hurts so much. Uh, you might get one or two cracks at an anime foil per box. And so, as I mentioned, some of them have really good multipliers on it. I think like there are four or five that are... $20 or more, uh, Tomic is not going to be, <laughs> not going to be one of them. Ah, swing and a miss. That one hurt. Okay. Arclight Phoenix, cool card. Man, I'm a little disappointed on that one. That one hurt. Infernal Tutor, also a neat card, but uh, not not super valuable. And then Life from the Loam. Hey, Life from the Loam is a good hit. It's, it's got to be worth a few bucks, probably in the range of, of five bucks or so. So, decent. Cloudfin Raptor. Aetherize, which is great. Call of the Conclave and Golgari Guildgate in that mana fixing spot. Man, that anime foil. That one pained me a little bit. Okay, three packs left, counting the one in my hand. We are out five lost shock lands. Seven seems to be about average, but I've, I've again, I've ranged from five to, to nine. So, Cranko Mob Boss in the Retro Frame Foil. Followed by Prime Speaker Zagana as the anime in the anime slot. Hey, there we go. There's a retro frame breeding pool. Very, very nice. Uh, you can't really go wrong with, with breeding pools, especially. Uh, I'm going to say breeding pool. And it's probably, for again, for the non-foil, probably in like the $18, $20 range. So that is a winner for us. Blind Obedience. And Shattering Spree. I kind of like this Shattering Spree, though. That Retro Frame Foil Shattering Spree is neat. Putrefy. Skewer the Critics. And a Selesnia Signet. Okay. All right. Two packs left. By the way, the only uh, unless I missed one, which is, I guess, plausible, especially with all the Retro Frames we've been pulling, only three Mythics, which is weird. Okay. No more Retro Frames unless it's going to be like a Cyclonic Rift, please, or like a Serial Number card. Hey, all right. Temple Guard. Nice. I think this is still technically the, like the lesser of the retro frame foil shock lands, but as I mentioned, you really can't whiff on these. Uh, I think they're ranging from 30 to, to 50 bucks. I think Steam Vents is kind of at the top, right around 50, and Temple Gardens is right around 28 to 30 bucks. So uh, the fact that our box even has one, we will absolutely take. It puts us up to seven shock lands, and that is, by the way, just beautiful. Like the retro frame foils look they look really good. All of them look good, but they, these especially, they look incredible. So, very happy with that. Followed by a borderless Hallowed Fountain. Nice! Uh, Hallowed Fountain kind of seems to be a little bit on the lesser of the scale on Shocklands as far as desirability is concerned. But at this point, uh, we don't, we, we're not judgmental on, on our Shocklands. That's five borderless, by the way, counting the one foil. Uh, so, absolutely, we'll take that. Savara, this time in the non-foil as a retro frame, sure. And Bedeck, Bedazzle. Simic Guildgate, Orzov Guildgate, hey, Persistent Partitioners, and Rakdos Guildgate. Okay, nice. So that brings us up going to this last pack, by the way, with all of our with all of three mythics in there. Uh, that does bring us up to eight Shocklands. Keeping our running total here. Wouldn't it be spicy if we had a pack that had like two or three to end? Make up for all those those mythics that we're not we're not seeing right now. Or a Psych Rift. We'll take that. Uh, oh, alright. 
Anime foil Crypt Gas. Not bad. As far as Rare is concerned, Crypt Gas was one of the animes. I mean, obviously the artwork on this is, is really, really cool. Uh, it is definitely sought after. The pre-sale price on this was insane because uh, it really hadn't been reprinted. But now it's down to like, I mean, even the, the foil version, which does have a little bit of a bump to it, probably in the $7, $8 range. So not a nothing hit, but obviously not like a, a gigantic hit either. And then a Mythic Karlov. Sure, the Ghost Cancel An anime, Karlov, again, a few bucks. Uh, has a little bit of a multiplier to it if it's uh, foil, but regular anime, Karlov, just a few bucks. Seal of the Guild Pack, one more shot here. And New Mizzet Perun uh, as a pack foil. All right, and maybe the, maybe the mana fixing spot. Let's see, I have gotten two before. Guild Gate, no, so let's need Guild Gate. Okay, overall, not a bad box. The fact, that, the fact that we got so many borderless shocks really does help. Weird assortment of mythics. Only four mythics, kind of weird. And I, I mentioned it as soon as we pulled it. The, the anime foil Tomek really, really hurts because you're like, ah, you're only going to get so many cracks of that. We pulled a lot of the retro frame stuff. And uh, unfortunately, as far as the value is concerned, that's not where it's at. But overall, I'm pretty happy with eight shock lands. And I think that this gives us a pretty good... Uh, uh, floor as far as what boxes are for the going rates so decent box overall that's going to do it for me today hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did do me a favor if you're not subscribed already hit the subscribe button for me hit the like button for me by all means drop me some comments i appreciate each and every one of you thank you so much everybody and be well